Okay, these are the Great Plains out back of um, Idaho Falls. These are the Great Idaho Plains. Um, and the reckoning is these were caused by the um, super volcano hotspot that now sits on the Yellowstone. And no one lives out here at all, apart from the odd dirt farmer. Oh, bloody hell, eagle! Bloody hell, eagle! Shit! Um, not quite sure what it was, but it was big. Okay, this is the drive into the experimental breeder reactor. And as you can see here, it's a pretty lonely place out here on the plains. There you go, a tiny little brick shack in the middle of the Idaho Plains, the world's first nuclear reactor. Now, this is one of the reasons why I came down here. Um, after they had uh, got nuclear weapons technology working, but before they'd got the rockets capable of delivering them to other countries, they came up with this idea of a nuclear-powered bomber. And these are that's the heat engine and this was the actual reactor and they were going to put this inside a plane which was going to fly around almost indefinitely um, on the basis that if the enemy managed to uh, blow up all of your um, airfields somehow you would always have this in the air as something capable of striking back at the enemy and the thing was going to be huge. Uh, yeah, plans for it somewhere. Um, I think a five-man crew or something with week-long flights. Um, and the reason it was scrapped was um, twofold. First of all, rocket technology came along and made this idea almost completely obsolete. And secondly, flying a nuclear reactor around is not the smartest of ideas. It turns out that um, putting them, filling them up with nukes as well isn't such a problem. The thing is that reactors are always um, they, 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 they always have quite a lot of activity to them. Nuclear weapons are actually quite safe. If you actually drop them um, they, they don't cause that much radioactive hazard. However, reactors are different because they've got lots of stuff that's already undergone fission in them and they've got lots of high energy particles. Quite often the entire reactor becomes activated. So having one of these things crash would be a big problem. The nuclear weapons um, aren't such a problem. They're, they don't blow up. They, modern nuclear weapons are incredibly safe. In fact, almost the only way that they can blow up is if they're told to blow up. You know, you can put them in fires, blow them up, all sorts, and the weapons themselves won't give a nuclear explosion unless they're actually sort of fired in the right way. So anyway, this was the nuclear-powered bomber. That was the reactor. And this was the heat exchange that was going to be used to power the engines. Impressive stuff, eh? Okay, this is stuff I didn't know. Because the plane was going to be so radioactive by the time it had flown around for a bit, they had a, a lead-shielded locomotive running on four tracks to tow the plane to its hangar, and they actually built some gigantic hangar in the desert 30 miles north of here. Ah, uh, there you go. 120-hour flights, five-day menu for the crew. Crazy, eh? So, this is where they store the reactor rods, and this is a hot cell. So they actually put the, when they wanted to work out what they were doing, they would, that's uh, about a metre of lead glass into the disperse with mineral oil, lead for the x-rays, mineral oil for the neutrons. I don't know how they got stuff in and out of there, and presumably it ran under pressure, reduced pressure or a nitrogen atmosphere. No. Okay, this is also the experimental breeder reactor where you get a chance to use some of these things. Unfortunately, they're a bit tight. Come on, baby. There we go. And, and then, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Hey, marble bonanza. So this is why um, 
nuclear power is one of the ways to go is because it can actually make its own fuel so 235 of course is about a oh, couple of percent of natural uranium and to actually isolate it to complete bitch however once you get 238 um, you can actually get a criticality from it and if you can control that criticality you can generate power which is great that's what this thing does that's the first um, well, the, the first experimental reactor to generate power. Anyway, this also sprays off loads of neutrons, uh, which can be captured by 238 um, to make plutonium, which you can also use as a reactor fuel. So, 238, of course, you get is, it's dirt cheap. You get buckets load of it. So when when you actually start off with your uranium. You, you could have isolate these um, two isotopes and you get about one, one and a half percent of this one and the remaining ninety something percent is depleted uranium which is essentially a waste product which is why it's used in kinetic penetrators and um, armor however if you actually strap this stuff around your well anything that screams off neutrons this will actually capture neutrons and turn itself into plutonium which I think initially the idea was is that you make bombs from this but you can also use it as a reactor fuel as well okay you have to read between the lines a little with the experimental breeder reactor um, milestones what it doesn't say is 1945 for the first two fission devices to be dropped on Japan first of those was of course a 235 fission device the other one was a, two, three, um, sorry, a plutonium fission device then, so they knew very early on that plutonium was good for making bombs. 1951, first reactor to generate electricity, that's all great. 1953, the first breeder reactor that can create more fuel than it creates. And of course the way that it does this is you take the 238, which is essentially a byproduct of making your 235, which is at the time a way of making bombs. But, um, and then you get a 235 reactor and that sprays off loads of neutrons and you capture some of those neutrons in your 238 and that turns it into plutonium which um, was primarily at the time um, needed for making bombs you, you don't need as much plutonium to make a bomb as you do 235 and 235 is a very expensive way of making bombs so and it's a full decade um, or just about a decade until they are actually making electricity from 239 plutonium sorry so I mean this is it's not entirely honest but to be frank all of the early nuclear stuff was oriented about making weapons and a lot of the early reactor stuff including England was almost exclusively, uh, exclusively directed towards making weapons.